I am really tired of my lazy student. They don't pay attention in the class and fail miserably. Then they come around to blame me and give me a bad review. I don't know how these kids pass high school to come to college. Hey, Freddy. What are you muttering about? Hey, Judith, you know. Students. What about them? I've got some scathing review from them on the summative questionnaire. These students want to blame others for their failure. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You must feel awful with all the hard work you put in. Do you think there is something you could change that could improve this little bit? There are some students who have done excellent. One of them got 98%, few others got over 90. I don't think I need to change anything. John, I understand that. There is always some room for improvement. I do see a lot of students with little motivation to study in my class. Is that something I can help? Absolutely. Aren't they supposed to be motivated before they come to college? Well, you can certainly do few things to encourage and motivate your students. Like what? There are three simple things that enhance student motivation. They are autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Hmm, could you explain me more about them? Sure. Autonomy is the freedom to choose own interest and pursue it. It can be incorporated in class by involving students in decision-making process allowing students to choose the topic they want to learn, providing various ways to participate and demonstrate their learnings. This improves their overall motivation. Hmm, sounds interesting. Have you tried it in your class? Yes, I have, Fred. At the start of the class, I ask students to establish the rules in the classroom which they follow for the rest of the semester. Students decide to limit the use of electronics devices like cell phone and laptop themselves. Furthermore, I give them several options on the assignments to choose from, like either to do projects or write essays. I also take requests from students to study new topics they think important but not covered on the syllabus. Sounds excellent. What are the other things you were talking about? Mastery and the other. Yes, mastery is another driver of motivation. It is the desire to be better at the things of interest. Students like any individuals are driven by the need to master certain things. If the path is made clear for the students and what needs to be done to excel the subject, students tend to get more motivated. OK, how do you do that in the classroom? Excellent question. Assessment plays a very important role here. It has to be authentic. You have to clearly explain your expectations and how you measure the progress. The progress has to be transparent, such that students know where they stand and what needs to be done to get their expected marks. Allowing students opportunity to improve in areas they are lacking are also quite important. Providing comprehensive reviews to the assessment is a step towards it. That is such a great idea. I will certainly implement that. I'm glad you find that helpful. Finally, the third trifecta of motivation is purpose. This is all about the goal, to achieve or do something. It can be invoked in students by addressing questions like why is the topic important? Why do the students need to learn about this? Where is the particular skills useful? Once the students see this clearly, they get more motivated to learn about. That sounds excellent. It is not even that difficult to remember. Autonomy, mastery and purpose. I will work on these topics and see how I can implement them. Glad I could be of help. Do you have any idea how you will invoke the sense of purpose in students? Hmm, let's see. I think I will spend some time during the lecture to talk about a real-life example. I will give them case studies and scenarios in industries. Is that how you address this? Yes, excellent idea. You can also make students involved in various projects and group works. You are very bright. I can certainly do that too. If I could slowly implement this idea, my class will be quite improved. Hey Judith, at one point you talked about authentic assessment. Is that different than regular assessment? What makes an assessment authentic? Yes, that is a very important topic, Fred. An assessment which asks students to perform real-world tasks rather than regurgitating information is an authentic assessment. Oftentimes, instructors ask questions that are easy to ask or mark. If your students are supposed to learn about electric motor, then perhaps a better way to assess their learning is to build a small motor. Answering multiple choice questions may not sufficiently assess their learning. Wow, Judith, you know so much. I think if I am able to implement some of these, it will completely transform my class performance. I don't know how to thank you, Judith. Oh, please. I'm glad I can be of help.
Please do not hesitate to talk to me if you need more information. There are several resources online for you to read about too. I will certainly do that. Okay, bye for now. See you.